Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to start this week we're going to start talking about constraint satisfaction problems. So at the end of today's class we should be able to recognize and represent constraint satisfaction problems and we'd also count how big the search space is. All right. So a constraint satisfaction problem or just commonly known as a CSP is characterized by a set of variables we're going to call these uppercase v1 to vn here. And each variable has an associated domain which we write the dom of vi which specifies a set of possible values the variable can take. So DOM VI is, the, is how we're going to write the domain of VI. Um, some possible world or total assignment is an assignment of one value to each variable. And that's what we're going to mean a possible world is an assignment of one value to each variable. What makes these interesting is because we have hard constraints on a subset of the variables. So a hard constraint on a subset of the variable specifies which combinations of values are legal. So the legal assignments are said to satisfy the constraint. So we're going to have constraints. We're going to talk about assignments to satisfy the constraints. And what we're looking for is a solution to the CSP, which we'll also call a model, is a possible world that satisfies all of the constraints. So here's an example of a map coloring problem. So we're going to assign a color, either red, green, or blue, to each state in Australia so that neighboring states have different colors. So what are the variables? Well, the variables here could be the state. So there could be Western Australia, you know, Northern Territory, South Australia, etc. Okay, and each one of those has to have a color. And so the domain of this is red, green, and blue. Okay, so they're the domains of here. So we're going to assign to each state a color. That's the problem. All right, how many possible worlds are there? Well, there's three for Western Australia. So there's three for Western Australia times three for Northern Territory times three for South Australia times, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states. So it's three to the seventh. Okay, three to the seventh is a bit over a thousand. Okay, three to the seventh is, um, is 2,187 people want to do it in their head. Okay, so that's how many different states there are. Okay, and what are the constraints? Well, the constraints are that they have to be different colors. So Western Australia is not equal to Northern Territory. You know, Western Australia is not equal to South Australia. So the different these variables that represent the colors of the state have to be different. So they're the only two constraints that involve Western Australia. All right, so that's the, they're the constraints. So there's a constraint basically for each bridge border in this in this map. So there's a possible solution to this. Um, we can colour you know, Western Australia, Queensland and Victoria as, as red, South Australia in blue and Northern Territory and New South Wales in green. And Tasmania can be whatever colour we like and here we just coloured it green for the sake of it. So that's a possible solution. All right, so as an example, so if we have variables A, B, C, there are three variables a, b, and c. The domains are one, two, three, and four. And the constraint is a has to be less than b, and b has to be less than c. If we think about the solutions to this, well, we could have a, b, c. We could have a is one, b is two, c is three as a solution. These are the solutions. Okay. Um, another one might be one, two, four. Right, because c could be four. Or we could have one, three, four, or two, three, four. Okay. In fact, these are the only four solutions to this problem. So there are this problem has four solutions to it. So there are assignments to A, B, C, and there are four solutions. Let's look at another example. So this is an example with A, B, C, D, and the constraints are A is less than B, B is less than C, and C is less than D. If you try to work out this, you need to know that there's only one solution to this. So A has to be one. We're going to write A is one, B is two, C is three, and D is four. <clears throat> it's the only solution to this where A is less than B is less than C is less than D. Okay, so these are so every other type assignment you might think of violates one of the constraints. <clears throat> Here's another one. There are variables A, B, C, D, and E. And there are four, the domain is four, 
1, 2, 3, and 4, there are five variables. A is less than B, B is less than C, C is less than D, and D is less than E. And if you think about this, A, B, C, D, E have to all be different numbers, one less than the other, and only four available. So here there are no solutions. So sometimes there are no solutions to a problem, to a, to a CSP. All right. Um, so here there's different variances, sub problems we can do. One is to determine whether or not a model exists. Um, we can do to find a model, so we can say, is there, give me a model. We could find all models, so you could try and enumerate all of the models. You can count the number of models. We can find the best model given some quality, model quality, and we're going to talk about later on, we're going to talk about soft constraints, which are going to specify preferences. So we're going to have hard constraints which say what can and cannot be done and soft constraints are going to specify preferences and sometimes you might want the best one according to some valuation and we might want to determine whether some property holds in all of the models is it the case that queensland has to be the same color as victoria in all of the in all of these models so that's one thing that we might query is whether there are two states that have to be the same in all models all right so here's a here's a Here's a domain of what we're going to look at. So here are variables A, B, C, D, and E. And so we're going to think about scheduling activities. If you think about scheduling you know, rooms to meet, meetings to rooms, or meetings to times. Okay, so these might be um, various activities and they represent when are they are going to start. And the domain of each of them might be one, two, three, and four. So here's an example that we're going to go, it's our running example we're going to do. And some possible worlds here. Well, if you think about what the possible worlds are, right? A is one, you know, B is one, C is one, D is one, um, and E is one, is a possible world, right? So as A is two, B is three, C is three, D is one, and E is two, and there are Lots of them, right? So there are, for each assignment of one value to every variable, there is a possible world. Okay, how many possible worlds are there? Well, there are four for A, and four for B, and four for C, and four for D, and four for E. So there are one, two, three, four, five variables, therefore there are four to the fifth. So we're going to multiply four, um, we're going to multiply it by five times. So it's Four, 4 for A times 4 for A times 4 for B. So 4 for A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so there are 4 to the 5th possible worlds. Which is, which is 1,024. So there are 1,024 possible values in here. We can imagine enumerating them, but after a while we're going to get to problems where there are too many to actually enumerate the possible worlds. All right, and here are some constraints we're going to do. Um, you know, B is not equal to 3, C is not equal to 2, A is not equal to B, B is not equal to C, C is less than D, but A equals D, E is less than A, E is less than B. So these are all constraints. I suggest that you pause this video and then try and work out what a solution is. I'm not going to give you a solution now, but just pause it, look at this, and see if you can work out what a solution is. So they're not sometimes they're not so easy to do. Here's another crossword puzzle. Here's another example. It's a crossword puzzle, right? So we have to fill in the words from these are the words we can put in. We can have, you know, we have to fit in a word across here. We have to fit in a word down. Um, so in here. What are the variables? Well, the variables could be one across, um, one down, right, um, two down, etc. You know, three across. Okay, so there are so there are five variables: three down, three across, and four across. And the domain is this set of all the words. So that's the domain of all of these. So the domains of these, um, so each one across can be any one of those words, two across can be, two down can be any of those words. 
Okay, so they're the domain, they're the variables and they're the domains. The possible variables are possible domains of this. We'll find out there's another representation of this exactly the same crossword where the vari where the variables are each individual square and the domain is a set of all letters of the alphabet. So the mul multiple ways of representing the same constraint satisfaction problem. How many possible words are there? Well, there are There are 15, there are 15 words, so there are 15 words, right? So think about, for one across there is 15, but then you also have to do one down, so that's times 15. And there's two down, so that's times 15. There's three across, there's 15 for that, and four across, there's 15 for that. Okay, so we get 15 to the fourth. Okay, so that's how many different possible worlds there are here. Okay, so what are the constraints? Well, the constraints are that the first, they have to meet, the have to have the same letter where they meet. So the constraints are, yeah, there's the same letter where they meet. So if you think about it in, um, in sort of Python, right? So you need one across, you can think of that as an array. The zeroth position of that is going to have to equal one down. The zeroth position of this, and the um, the third letter, which is of one, the third value for one across, has to be the same as the first letter for two across, etc. Okay, so they're the constraints in here. Here's another. Here's a bigger crossword puzzle. There are ten thousand words. And there are from um, from two to ten, um, you know, of, of each length. There are ten thousand words. There are um, you know sixty or seventy different things because some are same. So let's say there's seventy. So then there's ten. So the possible worlds is ten thousand to the seventieth, right? Which if you do, which if you do that is um, is ten to the four seven fours, twenty eight, two hundred eighty, and there are said to be only ten to the eighty part um, atoms in the universe. So this is actually a big number, to ten to the two hundred eighty. There are lots of possible assignments of values to variables here, only some of which are, are legal. All right, here's another example. Is a Sudoku. So the variables here, so here's the Sudoku, so what happens is you have to write, in each of those blocks of nine, you have to write the letters one to nine, um, and they can only appear once. In each row, they can, uh, there's letters one to nine appear once. So the variables could be each location. So the variables could be each square, could be a variable. Um, so this square and this square and this square. Um, the domain is, one to nine. Okay, so there's each variable is at the domain is, a, is the set one to nine. How many possible worlds are there? Well, there's nine to the to the eighty one, which is another big number about the same, you know, like the number of particles, in the, no, number of atoms in the universe. Okay, so there are, we're getting up to big numbers just through doing Sudoku. Um, what are the constraints? Well, the constraints here is the numbers in each square have to be one to nine. There is one to nine in each square has to appear exactly once, and in each row, in each column. They're the constraints. So when you tell you the rules of Sudoku, they correspond to the constraints that we're trying to solve. So given a set of variables, we can assign a value to each variable that either satisfies some set of constraints, which you've seen before. These are called satisfiability problems, and these are called hard constraints. Or we can do minimize some cost function, which assignment of values to variables has some cost, and these end up as optimization problems, and these are often called soft constraints. But most of the time, they're a mixture of hard and soft constraints. They're off, you know, constrained optimization problems are very common. So here's an example of that. 
So it turns out a few years ago, one of the master's students in our department wrote a, a master's thesis where they were, looked at scheduling final exams. And UBC adopted the, uh, that AI system to schedule final exams. And here there are, there are 13 exam days, 52 time slots we have to, so there are 30,000 students who take exams, there are 1,700 sections with exams, there are 105,000 student exam periods and 274 rooms across 38 buildings. So this is much bigger than the examples that we've seen before, but this is sort of a, a real world example. Okay, so the variables here, well, it seems as though the, the obvious thing for the variable is each section, there's each section is a variable. Each section can be seen as a variable. Um, and what we have to do is the domains of this, we have to take in, we have to assign both a room and a time. So there's a room and a time. So there's, so the variables are the, are the sections. So the sections are those things which have, to, which can have a, you know, a section is whatever and has to have a, um, an exam at the same time. That's what we've defined a section is. So the domains here, we have to assign a room and a time. So let's only consider the times here. Okay, how many possible worlds are there? Well, for each of the, the times, there are 52 time slots. So for the very first course, there's 52. For the, um, for the second one, there's 52. So there's 52 to the 1,700. There's a lot of possible worlds in there. And that's just for you know, assigning a time, a time to each section. There's also the room assignments, um, which ends up being of you know, even more different room assignments. Okay, the constraints here, well, let's have a look at what the constraints are. So there's a constraint, there can't be more than 30 conflicts for a section. There can't be more than 30 students in a section who have, um, who have a conflict with the time. And you might think that is high, but if you reduce it very much, you'll find out there are no solutions. So some sections for which you really have to have a number of different, the only way that can work is if you have a number of different conflicts. So the hard constraint is 30 in, in a section in UBC. Um, there's the allowable times for each exam, which, which times can each exam be in? So each exam has possible times it can be in. There's allowable rooms for each exam, so it has to be able to fit appropriately. Um, there's requested room features. So if someone requests a room feature, that has to be satisfied. Um, there's unrelated exams cannot share a room. So there's a separate room for every exam. Um, Cross-distance courses must have the same exam time. So if there's two courses that have the same, you know, they're essentially the same course, they have to have the same time. Um, and evening courses must have evening exams. We can't expect people who register for evening courses to have to come in during the day because presumably the reason they did evening courses is because they're working during the day. Okay. And now the soft constraints is what we're trying to minimize. We're trying to minimize conflicts. So we're just trying to minimize the number of conflicts. We know we can't get this to zero. So we're just trying to minimize it. Um, we're trying to minimize the con students with two plus exams on the same day. So we're trying to minimize that. So we don't want students to have two or more exams on the same day. Sometimes we need to, but like, we're trying to minimize it. We're trying to minimize with three or more exams in four consecutive time slots. One, um, one evening and one morning is a, is a is a pain. Um, students with back-to-back -back exams we're trying to minimize. We're trying to minimize students with less than eight time slots between exams. Okay, so we're trying to minimize how much they have between exams. Um, preferred times for each exam. So people put in a preference for times for each exam and there are preferred times. You know, that's just another constraint we're trying to minimize. We can't accept all of these preferred times, but we're just trying to trying to have as many preferred times as we want. Um, preferred rooms, so if an exam has a preference for rooms, we'd like to, to add that in as a soft constraint. Um, and the room capacities, so we'd like to not put a small, for example, we'd not like to put a very small class in a very big room. So it's trying to 
it's trying in here to alloc to allocate rooms appropriately. It's the other constraint. And the other constraint is that first year exams are on the last two days for the fall exams and fourth year exams um, um, you know, on the last two days in the spring exams. So I'd like to you know, minimize those. Okay, so they're the soft constraints and the hard constraints. So that's sort of a real world problem that people use AI systems for. Okay, let's stop now. Thank you.